Hello, my name is Elva Helstem uh, from the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about skeletal muscle angiogenesis in humans. In contrast to most tissues of the body, capillarization in skeletal muscle is plastic and readily altered in relation to use of the muscle. Skeletal muscle utilizes large amounts of oxygen during endurance exercise and the capillary density in skeletal muscle is important for oxygen diffusion from the blood to the muscle cells. In humans, muscle samples can be obtained by biopsy technique after local anesthesia of skin and fascia, and samples are most frequently obtained from the thigh muscle. Thin cross-sections of frozen muscle samples are immunohistochemically stained for detection of capillaries, and data from such analysis show that the number of capillaries per muscle fiber can vary from one to two and a half in untrained, and levels can be two to three-fold higher in endurance trained muscle. The capillary density in the muscle is closely related to oxidative capacity, as shown in this graph, where capillary length density is related to mit mitochondrial length density in different muscle groups and heart of various animals. The regulation of capillary growth in skeletal muscle is a complex and very well regulated process that involves a number of physiological signals, of which some are mechanical in nature, including shear stress and passive stretch of the muscle, both of which are inherent to exercise. Angiogenic signals also originate from changes in metabolism and from hypoxia. The effect of the physiological signals are mediated by a large number of angiogenic compounds that promote capillary growth and compounds that modulate or inhibit capillary growth, angiostatic compounds. Only a limited number of angiomodulatory compounds have so far been examined in skeletal muscle, but it's believed that the by far most important proangiogenic factor in skeletal muscle is vascular endothelial growth factor, VGF. A very interesting aspect of angiogenesis in skeletal muscle is the fact that the skeletal muscle cells are involved in the regulation of their capillarization. They do so by storing large amounts of VGF that can be secreted to the extracellular fluid where it can act on the capillary endothelial cells and promote angiogenesis. From a human muscle biopsy, teased muscle fibers can be obtained, chemically treated and immu immunohistochemically stained. Immunostaining of such teased muscle fibers with an antibody to VGF and examination with confocal microscopy as shown here, as well as with electron microscopy with nanogold staining shows the VEGF is located in vesicle-like structures that are present throughout in the muscle fiber. Quantitation of these vesicles close to the sarcolemma in muscle fibers obtained from humans at rest and immediately after a bout of exercise show that the VEGF vesicles redistribute towards the sarcolemma during exercise, presumably to release VEGF to the extracellular space. This theory is supported by studies on skeletal muscle cells in culture that can be electrically stimulated to contract to simulate exercise. These cells secrete VGF to the extracellular medium upon contraction. In humans, secretion of VGF from muscle tissue is supported by use of the so-called microdialysis technique, whereby a buffer is perfused through a plastic tubing positioned in the thigh muscle. The tubing contains the dialysis membrane now located in the muscle that allows for diffusion of EGF from the muscle interstitium to the buffer perfused through the tubing. The dialysate is collected and analyzed for VGF. Measurements of VGF in interstitial fluid collected from the muscle at rest and during exercise shows that VGF concentrations increase four to seven fold during muscle activity. Thus, we propose that the muscle fibers are involved in the regulation of capillary density within the muscle tissue. During exercise or passive movement, mechanical factors such as shear stress and passive stretch elicit redistribution of VGF containing vesicles to the sarcolemma. VGF is secreted from the vesicles to the extracellular space, whereby the interstitial VGF concentration is increased manifold. VGF acts on the capillary endothelial cells, promoting initiation of angiogenesis. After termination of muscle contraction, VGF mRNA is upregulated in the muscle cells to replenish the VGF stores. It does not appear that there is a significant exchange of VGF between the muscle interstitium and the circulation. Thank you very much for your attention.